Hello there. Welcome to Happiness Headquarters. We here believe with the help of kind-hearted athletes like yourself, our mission to spread love and peace to the whole world is possible. I would kindly request you to join us every minute till the end as we get to react together to these videos that we shall be seeing here together, my friend. But before we do that, let's give thanks to God Almighty for gathering us here. Father, thank you for this beautiful day, Father. Thank you for this soul, Father. Thank you for their life, Father. Thank you for helping them to click this video, Father. Bless them abundantly. Thank you for our animals, Father, and thank you even for today's fruit. Thank you for your word, Father, and forgiveness of all our sins, Father. Dear Lord, we kindly request for your guidance and intervention as we react to these videos every minute till the end. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. My friend, before we even dive in, let's first get some wisdom from the book of knowledge so that we may be guided in life and as we react to these videos. Kindly pass me the book. Yes. Book of Knowledge What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. Philippians 3.8 Let's dive in good babe soon. This gorilla indicates in language signs that he is not allowed to be fed by visitors. Ha! How did he know the sign language? This dog teaches a puppy by himself that he doesn't don't bite the sofa. Wow. Hey, this is good vibes, you see? This is a very intelligent animal. These animals, my friend, here are just wonderful and incredible. Just like this baby cheetah who is calling her mother so that she may wait for him, you see? Oh, man, because their steps are smaller compared to the mother's steps. This hyena largely bypasses a leopard to show him his respect. <laughs> this is one wise hyena, you see? It knows how to deal with other people. Ah! Respect towards everybody and every creature, just avoiding trouble. This coyote here is waiting for his best friend, the badger, so that he can what if cross I told the you tunnel that from here to here is 6,400 kilometers. But from here to here, it is 7,200 kilometers, which looks like half this size. But in reality, it should look like this. This is because it is tough to project a three-dimensional surface onto a two-dimensional map. There will necessarily be some distortions. Throughout history, cartographers have made some preferences. The widely used Mercator projection makes the countries far from the equator look bigger than they are. For example, we think that Greenland is a huge piece of ice, whereas it is only two times bigger than Turkey. In my recent video, I revealed the true sizes of countries and the reasons behind them. Now, let's explore some countries that are surprisingly larger than most people think. For instance, Brazil is actually larger than the contiguous area of the United States. If situated in North America, it could span from the northern parts of Canada down to Mexico. In Eurasia, it could stretch from northern Russia to Saudi Arabia, and from Hungary to Kyrgyzstan. India may seem large, but it doesn't appear huge on typical maps due to the Mercator projection, similar to China and Russia. Lastly, Saudi Arabia could encompass most of Central Europe, much of Eastern Europe, and most of the Italian peninsula. Videos that cannot be explained. Two wolves waiting outside this man's tent.
My God. Man. Oh, oh right, this is unbelievable. All right. Got this nice bottle of boiling water to keep my sleeping bag warm, but I'm not quite ready to go to bed, so uh, I'm just gonna put it right there. On that note, I think I'm gonna get my bed set up. Always try to put something in between the stove and my sleeping bag in case I roll around in the night. I don't want that sleeping bag even touching that stove. It'll melt a hole or worse yet, catch on fire. Go to sleep and I'll see you guys in the morning. Three photos that cannot be explained. In the mid-1990s, a photo was taken of an elderly woman moving into a nursing home. To her family's shock, when the photo was developed, a figure appeared in the background. The woman identified this figure as her husband, who had passed away 13 years earlier. The family insists that no one else was present when the photo was taken, leaving the mysterious figure unexplained. Number 2. In 1964, Jim Templeton took a photograph of his daughter during a picnic in Cumbria, England. When the photo was developed, a mysterious, spaceman-like figure was seen behind her. The story became even stranger when Jim was visited by men in black suits who insisted on visiting the photo location. Additionally, a missile test in Australia was aborted when technicians saw figures resembling the Solway Spaceman near the test site, adding to the eerie mystery. Number 3. A 1940s photo of the reopening of South Fork Bridge in Canada reveals a man dressed in modern attire, out of place with the rest of the crowd. Could this be a time traveler from the future? This guy prayed for an atheist college student while he was walking to class. And God showed him a miracle that changed his life. You've got to check out this story. This young man, I don't have a name for him. I don't, I guess you could call him Jim, whatever. Uh, but he's a little bitty guy, maybe five foot two. Yeah. 110 pounds, college student, atheist. Mm. And, and we're walking. He's like, you can pray, but I got to get to that building. So we're walking fast. Yeah. And I, we're just walking, uh, like across the street, walking as fast as we can. And so we're talking a little bit and, and his basic thing was, I said, what do you need to believe? What do you need God to do in order to believe in him? That was the prayer I, or the question I asked everybody. That's so good. That's it. Like what miracle, what's the biggest thing you could ask for God? He wants to flex. That's so good. Let him flex his muscles. Come on. And then they were like, uh, they'd come up with something. I say, really, that's the biggest demand that you could put on God right now. And they're like, well, why is the biggest? Because I need you to know he loves you and he wants a relationship with you. So good. And they were like, okay, you know, they would come up with something. Well, this kid said, okay, fine. I want my mom to call me and apologize. And I went, okay, I need some backstory. He goes, my mom left us when, when I was eight years old. I haven't talked to her since. I recently wow. got her phone number, but I haven't had the courage to call her. She needs to call me and apologize. I said, you let me pray for that? We stop in the middle of the street, like in the middle of the road, stop. And he goes, yeah, you can pray. If, if God makes my mom call me and apologize, I'll believe in him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. So I, I was like, Father, I thank you for Jim, right? I was like, yeah, yeah, Father, yeah. I thank you for Jim. I thank you that you will have his mom call before I say amen yeah. Yeah, come to on. apologize and, and with heartfelt sincerity so that Jim knows that you love and want a relationship with him. In Jesus' name, amen. It was. It might have been that long of a prayer, right? Yeah. And, so you're not dragging it out, yeah. waiting for the call. You're just praying a normal prayer. Yeah. And then I'll paraphrase his response. But as soon as I said "Amen," I heard him go, "No way." Leaping way. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And I look down, and he holds up his phone, and it says, "Mom." Whoa. <laughs> and he looks at me, oh. and he's just like, and "I said, you got to answer it. Like that's the deal. You got to answer yeah, it. You yeah, got to yeah, finish yeah. this." And he was like, I can't. I said, answer it. Hello? Speakerphone. Hello? Baby, I'm so sorry. Wow. Gotta go. Hung up, fell on his knees and said, Jesus, you're real. I didn't lead him in a prayer. Come I on. I didn't say anything. He hung. He said, I gotta go. Hung up this phone, dropped on his knees and went, Jesus, you're real. Wow. Wow. And then he called his mom back up and said, Mom, I'm sorry I hung up on you, but I just gave my life to Jesus. And she, this is her response. She said, 
Baby, I met Jesus four days ago. Whoa, come on. This is too good. Yeah. And so then they're just like embracing through the phone. Wow. Total reconciliation in the moment. All forgiveness, the power of God. The come Holy on. Spirit is in. Come oh, on. it was incredible. Denial of evolution is unique to the United States. I mean, we are the world's most advanced technological. So, I mean, you could say Japan, but generally the United States is where most of the innovation still happens. People still move to the United States. Uh, and that's largely because of the intellectual capital we have, the, the general understanding of science. When you have a portion of the population that doesn't believe in that, it holds everybody back, really. Evolution is the fundamental idea in all of life science, in all of biology. It's like, it's very much analogous to trying to do geology without believing in tectonic plates. You're just not going to get the right answer. Your whole world is just going to be a mystery instead of an exciting place. As my old professor Carl Sagan said, when you're in love, you want to tell the world. So once in a while, I get people that really, that, or that claim they don't believe in evolution. And my response generally is, well, why not? Really, why not? Your world just becomes fantastically complicated when you don't believe in evolution. I mean, you, here are these ancient dinosaur bones or fossils. Here is um, radioactivity. Here are distant stars that are just like the, our star, but that are at a different point in their life cycle. The idea of deep time of this of billions of years uh, explains so much of the world around us. If you try to ignore that, your, your world view just becomes crazy. It's just uh, untenable, itself inconsistent. And I say to the grown-ups, if you want to deny evolution and live in your, in your uh, world that's completely inconsistent with everything we observe in the universe, that's fine. But don't make your kids do it, because we need them. We need scientifically literate voters and taxpayers for the future. We need people that can, uh, we need engineers that can build stuff, solve problems. These are, it's just really hard thing. It's, it's really a hard thing. You know, in another couple centuries, the, that worldview, I'm sure, will be, it just won't exist. I mean, it's, it's there's no evidence for it, so. Simpsons already know. Look at this. Oh, my friends, there have been crazy, 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 extremely crazy stuff and predictions from this animation here. And you have seen that in different episodes. Now take a look at this one. My God, this is crazy stuff. Are you seeing what's going on there? Oh, now with that in mind, look at this. This is 2024, my friends, you see? And now this is real life. Not real life acting or uh, anything, real life activities. This is something that uh, was happening or happened in uh, this year. You see? I read it. But why does it resemble so much uh, that scene you have just seen from that animation? What? what do you think this could mean good people of earth? Kindly please, please, please leave your comments. This is crazy stuff. Oh my god, unbelievable. What? Oh, who is this uh, guy here? Good vibes people of Earth. English people. Uh, who is this guy? Huh? Anyway, look at this fish also here. My God. Oh, oh man. What did he do that uh, their friends don't want to stay with them? My God. What's up? Oh, it's because of their color. Leave some comments. Jaw dropping. Powerful eye of a hurricane. Buried. This high resolution view shows impressive meso soaring. soaring. Ha, ah, this is crazy. 150 mile per hour winds as a category of four storm. This imagery shows very rapidly strengthening from a tropical storm into a powerful category four hurricane. In less than 24 hours as the hurricane season continues. Be sure to follow along here my friends for more interesting stuff. When you are the generational curse breaker of your family, chances are you are the black sheep, you are the scapegoat. You are the one in your family that has woken up to the truth. And those demons that have been going through your bloodline know that you know. 
and therefore they will activate within your family members to try to dim your light because they don't want to be exposed. You see, the generational curse breaker is the one that is able to remove themselves from the mind of the matrix and tend to look at things from a spiritual perspective and you're able to connect the dots and understand why things are the way they are. And within you, you have the power to break generational curses. And the enemy knows that. So of course the enemy is going to do whatever they can to remove you from your mission. You have to realize that you have been chosen for a battle. And the way you fight this battle is not from third dimension. You have to fight this battle from the fifth dimension. You have to understand who you are as God's child, the authority that you have, the blood of Christ and how to use it, and recognize that this is a spiritual war. They don't teach us these things in school. Once you wake up to the truth, you will start to approach things differently. For example, when you hear people talking bad about you, you don't have the desire to go to them and defend them, yourself to them. You know better. All you gotta do is activate your spirit team and have them and God handle business. Because you recognize as God's child, He will defend you. He will fight your battles for you. And when God is in control, you have nothing to worry about. And once you activate that faith, you'll understand you have nothing to worry about. You learn not to get triggered by the demons of others. You're an observer and you realize that there is something called divine justice. You have patience and you have faith. <laughs> and you know that God, once again, will fight your battles for you. But all of this done, all of this is done in the fifth dimension, not in the third dimension. I mean, you can try to defend yourself in the third dimension, but I'm telling you, when you lock in this level of consciousness and you recognize that there are divine laws, and once you step into your authority, you want to leave it in the fifth dimension. You know why? Because in that dimension, people get hit harder than what you would do in the third dimension. And all of this is with the hope that if they get hit, they'll make their word back to God. Because right now, the way people are behaving and people are acting, they think that they can get away with whatever. But there comes a point where they <laughs> mess with the wrong person. They mess with a child of God. And that child of God knows how to fight. And they'll think twice. You might be that person that will change that person. I truly believe that God's people, the chosen ones, like the ones that understand their authority, are the walking karma for these evil vessels. Because they got away their whole entire lives acting the way that they've acted, right? But once they mess with a chosen one who understands who they are, they're going to get the lesson of their lifetime. Because God said, Touch not my anointed. And when you have the anointing of God over your life, any evil that is thrown your way, you know, these people can go to whatever witch doctor they want. They can do whatever spell that they want. They can try whatever. But when you have the anointing, the true anointing of God, all of that is going to bounce back off of the person and return to sender. And you will hear stories and you will understand just how protective you are. Too many people think that they can take matters into their own hands and fight. Nah! You gotta let God fight your battles. You gotta let God handle your enemies. And you continue to shine. You continue to be righteous. You continue on developing your relationship with the Most High. Healing yourself. Learning the lessons. And recognize there are divine laws and they will be applied to your enemies. Stay strong, saints. Mm -hmm.
they put brass knuckles in their hands? <laughs> this is something that very few people will ever do, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is your first time seeing something like this. In this TikTok video that I was tagged in, we can see these two people, and their hands have some sort of implant. It kind of looks like brass knuckles. This person then proceeds to poke and play around with the implants below their skin. And these have seen a surge of popularity over the past several years. They're known as transdermal body mod implants. These implants are typically going to be made out of silicone. The artist is going to mold it, open up your skin, and place it inside. People don't just get these implants on their hands though. A lot of people that you're going to see who are really intensely into body mods are going to use them to create things like horns on their head. Here's another example of a little bit more extreme body mod implants. We can see this guy's got cheek, chin, forehead, nose, everything. There are also risks of things like nerve damage or infection, but these are rare if you go to a professional place. And to answer the question that many people had when watching this specific video, they did not implant actual brass knuckles. These are more than likely silicone. Why is this tree spraying water? <laughs> Listen, I know that most of the jokes under this video are gonna be a comment, but if you're actually curious as to what's going on here, make sure you stick around. This clip that I was tagged in shows a tree with a hole drilled into the bark and a massive spout of water shooting out, and clearly it's very high pressured. In the comments on this original video, I saw a bunch of interesting theories, but the general consensus was that this video is fake. But to be honest with you, I actually personally don't believe that this video is fake. One possible explanation for why water is spraying out of this tree is because of something known as tree heart rot. This is due to fungal infections, and what happens is the inside of the tree will end up getting hollowed out, and when it absorbs water, water could be stored here and pressurized. And the alternative solution here is that there's a natural spring bed below the tree, and this is pushing through the tree and spraying out through the bark. So, while it's certainly possible that this is fake and staged, I personally don't think it is. But what do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments below. Hit two, square root, cubit, up right up there, yep. Now divide by two, hit equal, cubit again, exit a third, divide by two, that is a loop, cubit again, hit exit a third, that's an unnatural it's a it's a loop it's a it's a tuck inside of the matrix it does not allow no. for math to make no. sense because of the square because of the identity principle well, the stuff unbelievable and some good vibes guy here came to this side of the world to interact with these wonderful cats here you see and they are suppressed but it's like they are afraid to move out of the car Oh, this one does not have issues with them. They could have just... It shows how this lion fears the safari cars. Yeah. Oh my god, this lion really fears this cars. What do fairies look like? Well, there's no real one way to answer this. Like I said before, they're not little small flying things like Tinkerbell. They look for the most part like us. They are the other people, so generally they do look like us, but they can shapeshift and take many forms. Fairies is really just an umbrella term for spirits of the land. So you have many variations. You have the ones like the Tua de Danon, which were the gods and goddesses of Ireland many years ago that went to the other world and became technically fairies. Then you have Selkies which are women that can shapeshift into seals. They're elemental beings as well, so they can come out like woodland creatures, like water kind of fairies, or through the fire or through the rocks, you might see them morph and change into this world. Speaking of change, you also have the scarier side of fairies, which are like changelings. And these are sickly babies or elderly fairies that, that get changed out with human babies when they want to take some back to their world. You also have the puka, which is one of the scariest ones, uh, a trickster shapeshifter kind of being that can take many forms like a horse or a rabbit or a deer or sometimes a man. Then you have the old classic Banshee, the old woman with the long white hair and the comb that will scream when a family member is about to die. And then you have the headless horseman, which is actually the Dullahan, which comes from Irish mythology as well, another scarier version of them. So they take many forms, they shapeshift, they can take the forms of animals. You might see them as a crane or a heron, or sometimes maybe a fox. They're magical beings and they're ethereal and they're elemental beings, so they can show up as anything. I've seen one recently, actually, 
and I'm going to be speaking about it in next week's podcast at Lock Crew in Mead. And it was a man playing a flute and his face was very, very red. And it wasn't red from playing the flute or drinking too much whiskey. It was more red from just being a magical spirit of the land. And that's what they are, they're spirits of the land. So fairies are just kind of an umbrella term for all these types of beings. Wow. Did you know that? I have a problem, everybody. I have a fruit that is supposed to be so delicious that it has driven people mad. This is Diosporus Lotus, and it has that name because some people believe that this is the fruit that the lotus eaters are eating in Homer's The Odyssey. Eh. It's a sweet, mild flavor. Like a sweet potato sort of taste. Also a bit of like an apple flavor. It's not a bad flavor, but it's not a flavor that I would stay on an island forever and not return home for. These are very popular in Pakistan. They dry them out and they're sold along like other kinds of dried fruit. So is there a reason for that? They taste more like cherry and um, they're good. Find polar and non-polar attention. This is crucial, so pay close attention. There are three main steps to using it, and if you follow it, all the energy you devote to that negative attention will dissipate, leaving you more energy to feed the positive version of reality you want to create. Let's talk about how this works. The first step is acceptance. When we are in a situation that feels like an abyss, that we are at rock bottom, we need to accept that this has happened. When we accept something, we can't be in resistance. You can't be in resistance and acceptance at the same time. Acceptance is the antidote to resistance. So please, try to understand this. We are not accumulating energy. The only energy being used is to redirect, to get out of the way. Your goals really want to manifest. You're just in the way. You just need to get out of the way for them to come into existence. We start with total acceptance of the current situation. Whatever problems are in your life right now, whatever you feel stuck in, or whatever your worst nightmare is, imagine that this has happened. You're totally on board with it happening and you see how life goes on despite it happening. You're no longer worried about your worst nightmare. You're no longer haunted by it. This is absolutely fundamental because most people think, if I accept the worst case scenario, won't I be attracting it into my life? No, you won't. On the contrary, if you accept the worst case scenario, you will no longer be feeding it with the energy of your resistance. If you continue to resist it, you will continue to feed it, which makes it more likely to happen. But if you just accept it and get out of the way, that's where neutral attention comes in. Acceptance is neutral attention. We can't change the present moment, no matter how hard we try, because the present is constantly changing. When you try to grasp it, it has already become the past. There's no changing this present moment. What you can do, what is in your power, is to choose what you would like in the next moment. We tend to fool ourselves into believing that if something happens, we failed. We get attached. We identify with the things we do. Come up with the worst case scenario and accept it completely. That way, you reduce all the importance. The second step is to realize how this setback or unfavorable event could potentially be a blessing in disguise. Any event that happens is a neutral event. We make it positive, negative, or neutral by the nature of our attention. Instead of looking at it as, this is bad, we can look at it as, how can this potentially be an advantage? How can this be good in my life now? What do I mean by a blessing in disguise? Sometimes, something happens to protect us. Maybe there's something bad in that situation that God or the universe is preventing us from experiencing. Just reach a point of acceptance and understand that it really happened. When you reach a more neutral state, you can start to think about how this could potentially be positive. The final step is to continually redirect our attention to what is desired. 
If I'm in a state of total equanimity and acceptance, I'll have my attention freed up to completely choose what is desired. When you become really good at doing this, you will become unstoppable. Nothing can stop you. This process determines which life path you follow, which quantum event manifests, which quantum event you experience in your life, and it all has to do with your attention. There's a good reason why many ancient cultures and religions talk about attention, about paying attention to something, about observing something, being in a mode of observation. Here, we're combining both. We use non-polar attention and then go into acceptance. This is neither good nor bad. We just accept that it happened. Then we start to think about the possible blessings in disguise. And finally, we come to the positive mode when we are in a state of equanimity. This process is one of the most powerful tools we can use to create the reality we desire. As a co-creator of reality, attention is your most powerful tool. When you learn to direct it effectively, you can manifest the life you want. So, the message I want to leave you with today is, if you feel bad about yourself today, allow yourself to accept that you're feeling bad and once you're in a state of equanimity, then you can focus on what's desired instead. But if you try to hide, repress or suppress what you're feeling, it will come back to haunt you in the future. At this point, whatever you're doing can be a form of resistance. Even if you're just creating positive affirmations in the mirror, you're actually resisting feeling something by saying the affirmation. When you learn to accept, redirect and choose what is desired, you are releasing energy that was previously wasted on resistance. You are using your attention effectively to create the reality you want. Remember, to accept is not to resign yourself to defeat, but to recognize the present reality. It is in this space of acceptance that our vision becomes clearer and the journey to what we want reveals itself. When we embrace the worst case scenario, we release the energy that was previously wasted fighting against it. And that's when our attention becomes the driving force for change. We redirect our focus to what we want and reality reconfigures itself in response. As co-creators of our own reality, we are endowed with the ability to choose our path, shape our experiences, and define our destinies. The true transformation begins when we choose to direct our attention to what really matters in our lives. Move forward with confidence and purpose, for you are the architect of your own